Today, crazy way today. We're gonna be talking about how to 3D print in rubber. Stay tuned. I'm gonna show you what I've learned. Hey, Crazy Will here from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're gonna talk about printing in rubber. TPU to be exact. TPU stands for thermoplastic polyurethane. Not like I didn't go on Google to figure out what TPU meant, because I'm the knower of all. Now it's in a plastic bag because this stuff does absorb moisture really quickly. Now normally you would have to have a direct drive for this to work properly. I don't have a direct drive, I have an Ender 3 and a Disway, and they're not direct drives. Now what a direct drive means is that instead of the part that feeds it into the hot end would be right on top of the hot end. In this case we have it back here going through a tube and it's not recommended to print on this type of machine. So they say. So I spent like a month playing with this. It's Overtra TPU. If you look at it, it's not like your typical filament. It's very bendy, very stretchy. It's a little difficult to feed into the machine, but it can be done. You can't, you can't break it and you can bend it any which way you want. Now I chose Overture because it's a brand that's really worked great for me. This video is not sponsored by Overture. They did not send this to me for free. I paid my own money for this. It was $26 on Amazon, which I think it's more now. I'll leave a link down below. If you can find it cheaper than my link below, don't worry about it. I don't have affiliate links. I have no dog in this fight whatsoever. If you can find it cheaper or you wanna use your brand that you like, go for it, man. It's a TPU. It does come in a sealable bag and I also use this 3d printed it was printed with PLA little container with slits in it Let me open it up it's filled with silicone gel balls that will absorb moisture so this thing is a moisture hog it likes to absorb a lot of moisture very quickly so it's not something that you leave on your 3d printer for long periods of time because you get more stringing that way and let me show you some of the things I printed with this stuff just to give you an idea of what you can make with this on a typical Ender 3 all right the first thing I 3d printed was a Batman symbol and you can see the sides arced it a little bit it is completely and utterly flexible and this was the first thing I printed. I thought it was really cool to make like a little bit of a batarang. The edges are pretty rigid, but overall, you can see it's very squishy and bendable. And then it goes back to its regular set self. The next thing I thought of was a bracelet. It's very bendable. Pullable. I'm sure it'd break if I if I put it, but it's very bend bendable, very flexible, and it worked out really well. And then the most obvious thing tires these are for actually the tesla truck and they're bendable and you can see they're squishy and you can use them for any hobby or toy or something that you want to fix is a little stringy as you can see it didn't print the greatest and then the next thing was i wanted to see if it could actually do a figure so i did a little group yes once again i chose black but yeah he did came out really good he is flexible so you could squeeze him and then he goes back to normal squeeze his head uh, uh, worked out really well. Then the next thing I printed, I wanted to go a little bit bigger, and I printed an octopus from Finding Nemo 2. Now, you'll notice the problems that we're having is stringing. You can see a lot of that stringing right here, and I tried to remove some of it, but it did print really good, except for, like I said, the stringing. That's the problem. Whenever you're printing from one area to another, it seems to have stringing issues, as you can see. So that is one of the issues I ran into with stringing. You can see he's squishy, and it maintains its shape. Also 3D printed a phone case that actually fits my iPhone 7. Give you guys a look at that. It has all the buttons and the connections and little cutouts. Still a little bit of stringing, but it wasn't bad. Very flexible. Give you guys an idea. Goes back to its original shape. Really interesting stuff. Now, as far as the stringing, I did multiple tests to try to get rid of it. I tried adjusting some settings. I tried retraction distance, retraction speed, and temperature. But in the end, the best was the generic TPU 95A that's in your Cura settings. Which is nice because the bed temperature is set at zero, so as soon as the print's done, you can remove it. But just to give you an idea of some tests that I did, that was a temperature test to see if temperature made a difference. This was some retraction speeds. Some more retraction speeds. 
anyway these are all my tests everything came inconclusive so uh, no matter what i adjusted and i went from one to ten and no matter what i adjusted it wasn't working i wonder if travel speed i think i tried a little bit on travel speed but i wasn't having any luck so these are all my experiments and they're all labeled on the back of what i tried to do just didn't work out now for lack of better wording, if you want to make it more squishy, that's the technical term, squishy, you can adjust the infill of the project that you're making. So if you want it more squishy, this is what it looks at 10%. As you can see, it's more malleable. <laughs> There's the word, malleable and able to move around and squish it more and it still holds its shape. It's just easier to squish and has a little bit less buoyancy, I guess. Is that, yeah, maybe that would be the word. And then I decided to do another print of a block at 50%. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. It's a lot harder to bend. It's a lot harder to push in and it's denser. So it's a lot denser. So you have a little bit leeway in it. And then I went with 100%, guys. Now, the reason why I went 100%, I wanted to see how malleable it was. And you can see here, it's really rigid, really hard. Still rubber, but it's more closer to the PLA type of style of plastic except it just it has I guess a little bit more ceiling power or a little bit more impact resistant I guess so those were my experiments to share with you guys I just thought it would be interesting to share with you guys my journey with this because I have been playing with different materials now I feel like I've got a pretty good grasp on PLA and how to print with it and how to get it to work and do the things I want I moved on and used pet G which I was not really a fan of I feel like it was not as easy to work with as PLA and now I'm using TPU. The future is I would like to try ABS next but going back to the TPU I found it was actually not bad on the Ender 3 and I was curious about that and I wanted to share my experience with you and I want to try and print as many things as I could to try to see hey is this something that you would want to use or try to use and I figured I'd give out the information so you don't have to kind of go through what I went through where you buy it and you realize maybe it's not what you wanted or maybe it is what you wanted. So I thought it was pretty interesting. I just wanted to share. That's it for me, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe if this helped you in any way, and ring that bell if you want to get notified when I make a video because, you know, relying on YouTube's algorithm to show you that I made a video is not very reliable, especially because, you know, these channels are here and I'm, well, you can't see how far down I am. And remember, you could do anything if you put your mind to it. Later, guys. It's filled with silicone gel balls. It's filled with... This isn't a Marvel movie, guys. There's no secret ending, no strategy or something. Just hit like and subscribe and maybe click on one of the videos above. Don't know what to tell you.